Hello, I'm Bill Kinney. This is video number 20 in my series on the foundations of arithmetic, algebra, and graphing. It's part 9 of a subseries on the arithmetic of rational numbers, aka fractions. I'm hoping that I can wrap up this subseries uh, by part 10 or 11. And after that point, I'm going to be going on to um, focusing on calculator use and thinking about rational numbers and, in fact, some irrational numbers as well uh, in the context of what it means with technology and decimals. Uh, so if you, if you were wondering when we we're going to get to calculator use, that's coming soon. But I want to spend at least two or three more videos wrapping up some stuff without using calculators. Got a long problem here. Um, it's, it's long because it's kind of a story. It's not quite as bad as it looks here. Oops, wrong way. All right, what's the story here? A recipe calls for making 30 chocolate chip cookies. Um, and it, Well, it calls for making one and a quarter cups of flour. Your eager to help 10 year old daughter uses up all the flour you had left and puts it in the mixing bowl with the other ingredients before you realize what happened. She did, however, so you were planning on just making one batch here of 30 cookies. She did, however, measure the flour, thankfully, and she measured it, measured it out to be four and a half cups, uh, assuming she can measure well, before she put it in the bowl. If you salvage the situation, by adding appropriate amounts of the other ingredients, how many cookies will you make? And in fact, equivalently, really, you have to think about, before you actually do this, you have to think about how, what are the appropriate amounts of the other ingredients. So if we can solve the problem of how many cookies to make, that'll also help us figure out how much of the other ingredients we'll need to add, though I'm not specifying that here. So you got this situation in your mind? It's a, kind of a long story there, but uh, maybe pause the video, read it over again, think about it, maybe draw a picture or something. We're going to now answer this question, and I hope if, if you think about it a little bit, it should make sense that you want to you want to take four and a half uh, and divide it by one and a quarter to essentially figure out how many batches you're going to end up making, how many batches of 30 chips, chocolate chip cookies you'll end up making. And that'll therefore lead you to how many cookies overall you'll end up making. So the key thing is to take four and a half divided by one and a quarter here. And then whatever that ends up being, we can multiply that by 30 cookies per batch to get the number of cookies we'll make overall. So what is four and a half divided by one and a quarter. She measured out four and a half cups of flour, but you only needed one and a quarter cups of flour. So this division will then represent how many batches of cookies you can make. It's probably best to, these are, you know, these fractions are represented now as what are called mixed numbers. It's probably better to represent them as what are called improper fractions first to help us uh, do this division. Four and a half is the same as four plus one half. Four is the same as eight over two. Four and a half is the same as nine halves as a an improper fraction. Actually, I don't know why they bother calling those improper fractions. They're, they're perfectly fine improper fractions as far as being valid. It's just a, a name to distinguish them from fractions as you're first taught, which are always between 0 and 1 initially. 1 and a, a fourth as an improper fraction is, is 5 fourths. So the problem here ultimately is take 9 halves and divide it by 5 fourths, which by the inverted multiply algorithm would be 9 halves times 4 fifths. I do hope I can talk a little bit in this video about, again, why this works from another perspective, actually, why you invert and multiply. I do plan on doing that here. We can solve this pretty quickly. Do a little cancellation. This is 18 fifths 
which is the same as three and three fifths. Three and three fifths batches is how many you're making. As far as answering the question, how many cookies will we end up making? We take 18 fifths and multiply it times 30 cookies per batch. The five cancels with the 30. We ultimately have 18 times six here. 20 times six would be 120. So 18 times six will be 108 cookies. That's how many you can make. And as far as the other ingredients go, um, for example, if you needed, um, well, one egg or something, you'd have to take, you'd have to have three and three fifths egg eggs overall. Uh, I'm not sure how you would do that exactly. You'd have the three eggs for sure, and then the fourth egg, you'd have to somehow take three fifths of it somehow. Maybe after you mix it up and you beat it up um, before you put it in the bowl. So that's the answer to the question. I'm going to spend the rest of this video talking about algebraically why does inverted multiply work. I've justified it justified it before by uh, focusing on first that, that pi problem, the French silk pi. Uh, we saw visually why it gave you the right answer. And then I also talked about writing the fractions in a bigger fraction with the numerator and denominator being these these fractions you are dividing. And essentially doing a little trick of multiplying by one in this, this disguised form that ultimately led you to seeing that you really do invert and multiply to get the final answer. Here I want to think about it yet another way, a more algebraic way. Nine halves divided by five fourths. Let's think of that as being an answer that I'm going to call question mark over question mark. What should that equal? Well, remember, division is the inverse operation of multiplication. Whatever this ends up being, it should be such that it, it, it should be a rational number such that when I multiply it by 5 fourths, I get 9 halves. Whatever this ends up being, I know what it's going to be. It's going to be 18 fifths, because we already figured that out. 18 fifths is going to be the number you need to multiply by 5 fourths to get 9 halves. Thought of another way, thought of it as an analogy with um, integer division. You know, why is 10 divided by 2 equal to 5? Well, it's since 2 times 5 equals 10. Think about that analogy there. 9 halves divided by 5 fourths is going to be 18 fifths because 5 fourths times 18 fifths is going to be 9 halves. But pretend you didn't know the answer was 18 fifths. How would you figure it out from that right there? Well, you want to isolate the unknown. You can do that by multiplying both sides of this equation by something that's going to make the 5 fourths cancel out. What can you multiply both sides of this equation by to make the 5 fourths cancel out? You can make it, you can multiply by 4 fifths. If I do it to one side, I have to balance it out by doing it to the other side. Four fifths, that's what that is. It cancels out on this side, it divides out, better to say, because the four divides out with that four, and this five divides out with that five, leaving you with really just a, a one. One is the multiplicative identity, one times anything is the anything. Therefore, in the end, question mark over question mark, the answer is nine halves times four-fifths, which is exactly what we do when we invert and multiply. Nine-halves divided by five-fourths is the same as nine-halves times four-fifths. And again, ultimately giving us 18-fifths for the answer. So there is yet another justification for why we invert and multiply, a more algebraic justification. In the next video or two, we'll see how it goes, uh, we're going to talk about how rational numbers satisfy uh, the commutative, associative, distributive properties that the integers do, and closure as well.